Coming in at number 30 is American Michael Kearney, said to have had, according to his parents, an IQ of 325 at age four. I spent my whole life doing things that can't be done. Uh, when I was 10, I graduated from college. Kearney, compared to the other prodigies, had a peculiar child birthing process. In particular, when his mother was pregnant with him, his father was away on an aircraft carrier throughout the entire pregnancy, and his mother, worried about getting fat during the pregnancy, became an extreme anorexic, keeping up a schedule of intense aerobic exercise, swimming, and sauna throughout the pregnancy. By the fifth month of pregnancy, owing to her extreme weight loss, she had developed toxemia and was hospitalized and put on IV of sugar water. Even in the hospital, while on IV, worried about getting fat from the sugar water and five months pregnant, she was so concerned about her weight that she would do cardio speed walks around the hospital stair climbs and sit-ups in her hospital bed. The doctor soon became fed up with the situation and induced her two months premature, and Michael was born weighing in at four pounds of two ounces. When his father returned and learned about the situation, he decided to make up for his absenteeism and devote the next five years to, in his own words, help grow the brain connections and synapses by stimulating the five senses. At some point along the way, Kearney learned about the Mallow's college graduation record and decided that he was going to beat this record. In this end, Kearney completed his associate's degree in geology at age 8, his bachelor's degree in anthropology at age 10, his master's degree in biochemistry at age 14, and a second master's degree in computer science at age 17 as currently the world's record holder for a youngest college graduate. Here's a picture of Kearney receiving his first college degree at age 8. Into adulthood, however, Kearney detached from education, and at age 22, in 2006, became a millionaire by winning the grand prize of the AOL Quiz Puzzle Game Show Gold Rush, and has since been playing poker for a living. Regis, you are playing with Michael Carney from Nashville, Tennessee. Michael Carney? It might surprise you to know that this fella has three world records in the Guinness Book of Records. What are they? I'm the uh, world's youngest college student, the world's youngest high school graduate, and the world's youngest college graduate. So I give got... us the ages. Oh, I graduated. I graduated from co I graduated from high school when I was six, and I graduated from college when I was ten. So, yeah. Wow. What are you doing now? I, uh, I play poker for a living. You play poker for a living. Next is Russian historian Nadia. Kamakova, the only child of a neurosurgeon mother and lawyer father who is promoted and popularized in Turkey and Russia as being the smartest person in the world. She supposedly started talking at age one, reading and writing at age two, enrolled in both medical school and college before age 15, has published over 25 books and read over 3,000 books with a photographic memory supposedly down to the comma. And at age 23, from such intense studying, had a brain hemorrhage and was in a coma for 20 days. At age 25, she became a professor of history and literature. Dünyanın en genç profesörü unvanını alan Camukova, fotoğrafik hafızası sayesinde 300 sayfalık bir kitabı iki saatte anlayarak bitirebiliyor. Ayrıca 3000'den fazla kitabı da hafızasında taşıyabiliyor. Ondaki zekayı daha bir yaşını tamamlamadan doktor olan annesi keşfetmiş. At number 28 is American mathematics prodigy Michael Gross, whose interesting biography is explained in the 1970 book, Genius in Residence. At age six, Grost had read through two sets of encyclopedias. At age eight, during a lecture to college students at Michigan State University, when asked if he'd ever done anything with binary numbers, he answered that he had worked two to the 80th power once on a blackboard in two hours time. And when asked about the relation between biology and astronomy, he explained that the two sciences needed to be integrated so to explain how, in evolution, the sun's reactions in water produced the first forms of life. He later went on to graduate from Michigan State University at age 15 with a BS in mathematics, then a master's degree at age 17 in mathematics, and a PhD in mathematics from the University of Michigan at age 23. Next is another up-and-comer, American music science prodigy, Shul Yeno, said to have an IQ of 200 at age 10. Yeno was writing by age 2, playing Chopin on the piano by 3, composing by 5. Yeno completed his B.S. in biology with a minor in chemistry at age 12 from Loyola University, Chicago. Then the following year entered the combined M.D.-Ph.D. program at the University of Chicago Medical School. 
completing the PhD portion of his combined degree in 2009 at age 18 in molecular genetics and cell biology, and is now in his third year of medical school as of 2010. An interesting factoid about Yano is that at age 12, he turned down an interview request with Oprah, stating that he wanted to do something bigger, like being a researcher or a scientist before going on television. It seems that the completion of his PhD was that something bigger he wanted to complete, and he now, as of age 19, gave his first television interview. Let's take a look. By the time he was two, Show was reading. By three, he was playing piano. By four, he was composing. Your IQ, do you know the number? No, I don't know my IQ. Uh, when I was a lot younger, I did have the IQ test. At that time, they couldn't measure it. Last summer, Sho got his PhD in molecular genetics and cell biology. Another up-and-comer is number 26, American Dylan Jones, notable for being the only engineering prodigy on this year's list with photographic memory said to have an IQ in excess of 200. By age 10, Jones was an engineering freshman at Colorado School of Mines, taking chemistry and calculus courses, and by age 16, he had completed his BS in mathematics and computer science with a minor in bioengineering. By age 17, Jones had completed his first year of medical school in 2009 and was studying to become a board-certified neurosurgeon by age 28. An interesting anecdote about Jones, particularly as compared to our previously mentioned number 32, Anand Kali, who could recite pi to 500 digits, is that not only could Jones recite pi to 500 digits, but that when Jones was 10, he was in mathematician Wiley Herman's office and told Herman that he had memorized the first 500 digits of pi. To test Dylan, Herman challenged him with a different number, E, the basis of the exponential, 2.71828, etc., wondering if Jones would get the two numbers confused. Jones returned two days later to report that he had perfected the first 100 digits. At number 25 is American parentally created mathematics prodigy Edith Stern, said to have an adulthood IQ of 200 to 203, who was raised in what has been publicized as the Edith Project. In 1952, Edith's father, Aaron Stern, too ill to work, decided that he would devote his time entirely to the raising of his newborn daughter on the theory that one can turn any random child into a genius by using the right accelerated education techniques. The entire project described in his 1971 book, The Making of a Genius. When Edith was an infant, he played classical music to her, showed her flashcards with numbers on them, read to her, and made a point of speaking slowly in complete sentences. In this end, Edith was speaking full sentence before age one, had learned the abacus and could read street signs by 18 months, read books by age two, was playing chess and solving arithmetic problems by three, read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica by age five, and had learned algebra. Edith was in college by age 12, and by age 15, she had completed her bachelor's degree in science and was a system professor of mathematics at Michigan State University. And by 18, she had completed her PhD in mathematics. And as an adult, she has gone on to do secret computer software research and development for IBM. At number 24 is Korean physics prodigy, Kim Eun Young, who presently holds the world's record for being the youngest person to solve differential equations at age four, and the youngest to complete a PhD, which he did in physics at age 15 and at age 17 was listed in the Guinness Book as having an IQ of 210. Hoon Yang's story, however, is the prime example of what happens when a child is pushed too fast. Hoon Yang was born the oldest of five children to a physics professor father and a medical school professor mother. He could speak four languages by age four. By age five, was studying physics at Henang University, shown here, and by age six was on national television solving differential equations. At age eight, he was invited to come to America to work with NASA, which he did, completing his bachelor's, master's, and doctorate in physics at Colorado State University, all before age 15. To put Un Young's age three or age four calculus ability in context, Isaac Newton, number four on this year's listing, at age 22 invented calculus, followed by Leibniz, number 10 on this year's listing, who at age 28 independently invented his own method of calculus. American physician Bala Murali Ambadi, completed his MD at age 17, mastered calculus at age 4, Michael Kearney at age 6. At age 16, the pressure became too much, and Un Yang returned to Korea, ending his eight-year stay in America, stating that his life in America for the last eight years was a living hell, and that he would have probably taken his own life had he stayed and continued to work with NASA under such demanding conditions. He explained that throughout his childhood, he never had any sort of personal relationships or any other peer age adolescents to interact with, only a rigorous schedule of daily objectives and research tasks entrusted all to NASA. 
He described this period in retrospect as an aimless life. After returning to Korea, curiously, he found that his credentials were worthless, so in spite of already having a PhD in physics, he had to retake the official tests for elementary, middle, and high school, eventually completing a second PhD in civil engineering seven years later at age 23, and he has since been active in the fields of water engineering and hydraulics. Next on our list is English hereditary theorist Francis Galton, notable for having the world's first ever IQ of 200 assigned to him, specifically by IQ scale inventor Lewis Terman in 1917. In an 1826 letter to his sister, Galton wrote, I am four years old and I can read any English book. I can say all the Latin substantives and adjectives and active verbs besides 52 lines of Latin poetry. I can cast up any sum in addition and I can multiply by two through 11. I can also say the pence table. I read French a little and know the clock. This type of mentality, along with other abilities as described in the 1917 article, The Intelligent Quotient of Francis Galton in Childhood, meant according to Terman's newly invented IQ formula, shown here, that Galton, at age four, was as smart as an average eight-year-old, and that he would thus have an age ratio IQ of 200. The first meta-analysis of geniuses was done by Galton, as described in his 1869 book, Hereditary Genius, in which he biographically examined the kindred of about 400 illustrious men of all periods of history to determine whether or not genius is something that is inherited. Our number one smartest person ever on this year's listing is described by Galton in his book as one of the greatest men of genius the world has produced. At number 22 is Polish chemist and physicist Marie Curie, who according to Luzanne's book of genius is ranked as the 20th smartest genius of all time with an IQ of 180 and who is known famously as the obsessive genius. Curie has been one of the only four people to have ever won two Nobel Prizes, one in physics for the discovery of radioactivity and one in chemistry for the isolation of pure radium. At 21 is English theologian and politician Thomas Wolseley, who completed his bachelor's degree in arts at Oxford University at age 14 and would go on to be one of the leading political figures in the wars against France in the 1510s and 20s. Wolseley, of note, is one of the only four geniuses to be rated with a 200 range IQ in the famous 1926 8,500 page study done by American psychologist Catherine Cox and her team of psychologists at Stanford University on the top 301 geniuses who have lived between 1450 and 1850, whose IQs were determined by five different raters based on intellectual ability of each genus before age 27. Above Wolseley, at number 20 in our list is Dutch jurist Hugo Grotius, again one of the only four Cox geniuses in the 200 range, a noted founder of international law, philosophy, theology, a noted playwright and poet. At age 11, Grotius entered the University of Leiden, had published his first book by age 16, was practicing law by 17, and by 21 had worked out the litigation aspects of sea trade as a free territory open to trade routes for all nations, and thereafter was being compared to people like Erasmus as being one of the most learned men in the world. 